It's the fourth annual Bark in the Park here in downtown Stanford. And as you can see and hear, it is all about community members and their loyal companions. September is Children's Cancer Awareness Month and behind me at Audubon Greenwich, a group of people and community members have gathered here for the third annual Children's Festival to support the Willow Project. Here outside the Pequot Library is the central hub of Southport and today is a day of celebration because it's the 380th birthday of Southport. You're wearing a very special number 14 jersey. Can you talk about the importance of this jersey and winning on homecoming? Yeah, um, Coons joins us with the highlights. Amber? Eric Bassick is the team to beat in boys basketball. They only have one loss and that was against the number one team in the state. Eric and Della, I am not tough like Lindsay. <laughs> one fall on the slopes and I'm sipping hot chocolate for the rest of the day and just <laughs> chilling out. I'm with you, Amber. Let's just add some spice. Della, Brian McMahon's boys basketball team started this season off a little shaky, but they're confident the team will start to click soon. Welcome into the Sports Edge. I am here in Madison at the Surf Club, where it's not exactly beach weather, but it's definitely football weather for Daniel Han. And there's one section in particular that is really cold and quiet. Welcome to Sports Edge. Amber Coons here at Middletown High School, where Middletown is going to take on Platt. And the players are already on the field. They're all bundled up because it's going to be cold, cold, and cold. And I'm going to go grab some hot chocolate. Adrian Broner always knows how to make a highlight. Hi guys, welcome to the Boxing Voice. I am your host, Amber Koontz. Adrian Broner and Adrian Granados are good friends outside the ring, but inside the ring, there was little to no love. Adrian Broner won by a split decision and Adrian Granados says, I want the rematch. Hi guys, welcome again into the Boxing Voice review. I miss you, I hope you miss me. Now let's talk about boxing and who are we gonna talk about? Deontay Wilder. Let's look at what happened in that game. But we have to start with the student section. They had a beach theme. Now take a look. Listen here. Vantage. We love it. <laughs> Amber, you were at both of these games for this cool doubleheader. Yes, well, we're going to have to get a little bit technical because I went to the University of New Haven game where they took on Southern, added some <laughs> cute words into this. But I went down to Southington where they took down Bulkley, and this is what happened. This was the first meeting this season between these two teams. So I think of them um, getting rid of Charlie Strong. He brought in a lot of great defensive players. But I think Tom, their new head coach, he brings in an offensive scheme. He worked with Urban Meyer. They're going to come out strong. And the SEC... No we Patriots, <laughs> Alabama, I can't put my money against them. I mean, that's Floyd Mayweather money. That's easy money. <laughs> that's easy money. <laughs> Eric McCullough returned home for the first time after being struck by a hit-and-run driver last month. A benefit luncheon was scheduled two weeks ago, but was rescheduled for today, and it has been transformed into a day of celebration. Here at Calf Pasture Beach in Norwalk, the National Eating Disorder Association is hosting an awareness walk. The goal of the event is to support the families dealing with this mental illness. I spoke to event organizer Paige, who talked about the importance of today's event. Amber Coons with more as to why tonight has special meeting for the Thunderbirds. It's homecoming here at Connecticut High School football, and they're starting a new tradition this year. They're going to be playing on a Friday instead of a Saturday. They usually play on Saturday. It's the first time they're doing it this way. One tradition that they're keeping is having fireworks after the game. Now, this is the biggest game of the season because it's all about the community. From Bohemia to Rokonkoma, they all come down, whether they know a player or know somebody at the school or not, they're down to support their team. We're hoping for a very good game tonight. David, back to you. Local sports, good matchup tonight in boys' hoops. News 12 Connecticut's Amber Koontz joins us with the highlights. Amber? Eric Bassick is the team to beat in boys' basketball. They only have one loss, and that was against the number one team in the state. Tonight they hosted St. Joe's. Let's go to Bassick High School. A little celebration before the game. It's senior night for the Lions. Bassick takes an early lead. Kevin Crawford showing off some ball handling skills before dish dishing it off to Jor Jordan Gallimore. Second quarter, St. Joseph's Jason James trying to take control of the game with a sweet roll off the rim. 
Fasik was too much tonight. Fast break for Jordan. He flicks it off to Kevin. I'd say that was a nice way to send off their seniors. Final score, 96-54, Basic. For the second year in a row, Norwalk's girls basketball team will play Stanford in the first round of the FCAC tournament. Last year, Stanford stunned Norwalk. Now, this postseason, the Bears are undefeated, and they're the number one seed. It's the day before first round action, and Norwalk's head coach, Rick Fuller, is doing some fine tuning before the rematch with Stanford. Senior guard Ashley Wilson explains they beat Stanford a few weeks ago in the regular season, but they don't want to suffer their first and only loss against Stanford, against Stanford in the playoffs again. We're going to bring it tomorrow. We're going to try to beat them again. Um, it's kind of the same situation as last year, so we really feel like that we need to beat them because, you know, they beat us last year in the FCX and we were really upset about it. So, um, you know, there's definitely some history there, but you know what? That's the past. It doesn't matter. We're two different teams this year. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a good matchup. The showdown is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at Fairfield Ludlow. This is a do-not-miss game. Today's hometown sports is fifth-grade boys basketball. Carter McAndrews from King's School and Stanford knocks down a three to go on and win the game. As always, please send us your hometown sports videos or photos to News12CT at News12.com, or you can post to Twitter or Instagram using hashtag News12CTSports. That was quite the shot for a fifth grader. Eric, imagine the baskets he'll be making in eighth grade. And I look forward to following his career, I think. All right, thanks a lot, Amber. Number three, Basic is taking on number two, East Catholic. They're both undefeated, and tonight, someone is going home with their first loss. Let's find out who. It was a packed house at Basic High School. Some spectators were stuck outside because the gym was at capacity. First quarter, East Catholic knocks on the door first. Matt Noling, one-handed lay-in. East Catholic up by one at the half now. Basic wants to return a favor. Emery Litton with the step back jumper. It is good. It was a back and forth game the entire night. East Catholic's Matt Beam finds his balance and the hoop. East Catholic remains undefeated. Final score, 56-53. The tournament is now expected to start the week after the U.S. Open. Eric, I was a ball kid at the Connecticut Open years ago, back when it was the pilot pen. Oh, wow. See, you learned something new. All right, Amber, thanks a lot. I am here with the Thunderbirds quarterback, Drew Guterri. You're wearing a very special number 14 jersey. Can you talk about the importance of this jersey and winning on homecoming? Yeah, um, you know, this number represents uh, Stan. Stan Harley, he died uh, a, couple years, uh, a couple years ago. He was very close to me and my family, and he's just, he represents something bigger in the community. And every year, someone on, oh, they pick one person on homecoming to wear it. And I was lucky enough to wear it this year. And uh, you know we pulled out for him, and he was really a, he he was on top of my shoulder tonight. You helped orchestrate six touchdowns, two coming by your feet, dominant performance by your offense and your defense. Give an overall explanation for today's game. I mean, we played as a team for once. For one, first time all season we played as a team, and uh, I started up front. The line did great, and I couldn't do it without them. My last question is for you. You guys are moving to three and three. Yeah. You just beat a four and one team. Yeah. How important was this game? For your playoff opportunities, it was huge. It was do or die tonight. You know, our season was on, our season was on the line, and uh, we we made a statement tonight. We're still here. Thank you, Drew. Thanks, Amber. So we're a week away from Jose Rivera fighting in Providence. He's going for his third KO. So we're gonna look at his nutrition, his dieting, how he's exercising, what he's working on for his big fight in a week. Let's go and take a look. We all like explosive drills, like box jumps. We like to tighten our butt, use our hips, use our quads, and jump up on that box and get the most explosion out of that workout. Now that causes a lot of stress on our knees. Now to still get the explosion that we get, me and my partner AJ, we're gonna give you an exercise called reverse box jumps, where we're gonna focus on getting that explosion out of your toes instead of your knees. Hey. 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 